Artists, these are trees that can only grow uh, uh, somehow. Okay? And uh, <coughs> the, I mean, if, <coughs> if you see how the, the, the roll ups work, uh, I mean, the roll up, uh, so the sequencer at some point, uh, it includes this, uh, well, actually, um, there is what we call it a globalized group. This is in layer one. And here is a tree of all the local exit group, local exit group of layer one, local exit group of A, local exit group of B. So we have one global exit group that actually collects all the local exit groups of all the chains. Okay? And this global exit group is the only this is the only piece that actually is transferred to the to the rollups. I mean this is broadcast to all the rollups. Okay? When this global exit route is updated, uh, uh, this global exit route is updated every time, uh, uh, I mean, every time a proof is generated. So every time a, a rollup uh, generates a proof, the rollup has a new global exit route, and then this local exit route of the rollup is included in the global exit route. Okay? And uh, it's, uh, so the idea here is that the sequencer, the sequencer can start using a global exit route, can start using a global exit route, uh, before, uh, before it's available in L1, but then it needs to prove uh, when you are proving when, when you prove you need to prove that this global exit route actually was uh, was 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 correct. Uh, uh, okay. But the, the important part is this is this state. Yes, we have a kind of a state, and and then you can deposit. Or sending messages or whatever, okay? So this is with tokens, NFTs is the same. Okay? NFT can be understand, uh, understood as a token with just a supply of money. Okay? So, um, okay, this is how it works right now, okay? But this is the, I mean, the problem of this is that, yeah, you need to wait for the proof. Uh, uh, some hope. I mean, it's like if you don't have the, the proof and you don't come into a layer one, you don't know that this global exit route is updated and, and, and so on. Okay? So when you have a, I mean, here in the, the, the aggregation layer, the idea of the aggregation layer is uh, imagine that you have a kind of a it doesn't necessarily be a blockchain, but to simplify the things, imagine that you have a kind of a blockchain with relatively fast, with fast finality. Okay, and uh, the idea is uh, so the idea is that uh, here the chains uh, commit to states and also solves all the all the all the dependencies. Okay, so imagine that here the, on this blockchain the users are the, the users are the chains, okay, the sequencers of the chains. Okay? So when a chain A, uh, maybe chain A commit to, maybe commit to state A1. Okay? But then chain B okay, and commit to B1. But B1 here have some de it can have some dependencies. Okay? So, I commit B1, but I have a dependency of A1. Okay? So it's like, okay, I'm commit to this state, but this state is going to be valid only if the uh, state in the in the chain A is, is A1. Okay? Then I can have maybe just commit of the chain C commit to C1, but it's based on B1. Here you, you can see that this dependency is, is like Okay, this C depends on B1, but B1 depends on A1. So you have like a, a graph of, of, of dependencies here. Okay. okay, so this is the, 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 the just the, the comments. Okay, and later on, later on, maybe the same chain, okay, like a different transaction. Okay, you can, you may have a, you generate the proof of P of A1. Okay, then you generate maybe somebody else here generates the proof of uh, B1 and, uh, and so on, okay? Um, 
if you see this chain in mean, this is a consensus, of course, if some origin is a proof of A1, A1 has no dependency, so A1 is already valid. So I can include the A1, I just include the, in the global X include the time generating, I am including A1 here. When I generate B1, well A1 is already valid, uh, A1 is already valid, so B1, so here the global X include will have uh, A1 and B1. But if I do it the other way around, I may mention that here, I, I, I ch check B2 and then I check, uh, so I'm checking B1 and then I'm just generating A1. So the global X group here to be still be empty, but here when I'm validating A1, actually uh, I'm, I'm validating A1, but A1, uh, so this uh, B1 is already generated, so this would mean that the, the, here the global X group would have both uh, at, at this point. So if here you need to solve these dependencies, but if it's a consensus, you know what you have here. Okay? And what's interesting part, uh, 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 well, so what's interesting part here? The interesting part is that, so when is that A1 does not need to trust the one or so there is not, there is not necessary to be any trust of uh, a of uh, the different chains. And let me explain why and what are the conditions that needs to happen for this to not trust. Okay, so you mentioned that I'm a sequencer, you are another sequencer, and, and you can be a malicious chain, and I can be a malicious chain. Okay? So here, so what's the thing that can go wrong? So I'm chain A, I come into A1, and, and, and you're cha taking chain B, and you're using A. A1, but then I, for example, I do a reorg of A1, and I, it's, uh, this commit is not valid, and then you as B, you become screwed because, I mean, you are, you are assuming your state is based in that the state of A1 is valid, but if I do a reorg or I change my state, uh, then I'm bad. So, if you are B1, what are the, world, so what are the conditions for, if you, if you are chain B, what are the conditions for for including chain A. Well, actually, is if you are able to build the proof of A1, then I'm safe. Why? Because if the chain A1 does not include the proof, like uh, the chain B can include that proof anyway. So there is a commitment. So a commitment is if you commit to the state, actually this state can be anything, it can be something that can be even a fake. Okay? But uh, the chains that the other so the other chains will trust. I mean, will use this state only, only if they are able to build the proof. Okay. So, and what can be if they are able to build the proof? Well, maybe it's because they already have the proof. Maybe if the, the proof is already generated by the other chain. You don't want to synchronize the chain. You just receive the proof. Maybe because you are following, you have a full node of the chain, and uh, and, and and you have the proof. And this means, for example, that if, if uh, A is a validium, you also need the data availability of the validium because you need to build the proof. You need to be able to build the proof. Yeah? So if I'm building the proof, I'm generating the proof or verifying proof? For what? When you're saying when they, they need to be able to build a proof, are you? They are able to, so they need all the information. So they okay. need all the information required to build the proof. So that means that, uh, so here the idea is that, um, Okay, um, this, this commit to A1. So I want to create a state that's based on this A1, but A1, I need to guarantee that this A1 is going to be valid. So I need that uh, the proof is, is able to be generated. Okay? And the idea here is if the chain A does not generate the proof, I, the chain B, the target relying on chain A, I would be able also to, to, to build the proof in the worst case system. Are you saying like have the capability to build that proof or in the background are you actually generating? Have the capability of build the proof is an enough condition for uh, incurring a dependent state of an object. And what distinguishes having the capability to build a proof versus just a full node? Uh, well yeah yeah, I mean if you if you if you have a full node, you if you have a full node of the other chain and uh, I mean and the state matches you will be able to build the proof by definition. Okay? But, I mean, here, uh, if you are chain B, you have like two options. Either run a full node of chain A, or 
just wait for chain A to generate the proof in order to, 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 to. Okay. Yeah? So you see that this can so in practical uh, the order cannot be like that. Right? So like uh, in order for chain B to uh, commit a uh, transaction dependent on A, I have to wait for the proof coming from A. Well actually I mean the, the chain A, so the chain B uh, so in practical is so for in order to include the chain A, uh, A1 needs to be committed because the first thing is uh, A1 cannot change. So it needs to be committed in the sense that, okay, uh, chain one, uh, this is what it is, and it, it, it's co it so it cannot go to maybe a uh, one prime. Okay? So it can be another cha a state that's valid, but uh, no, they cannot. Okay? So they already commit to this state, and this is going to be the next state, so A1 cannot reorg. Okay? So the, that's the, the thing. And it's a, it's a valid state. Okay? So with this, you have the warranty that this chain is going to go to this, to that state. Okay? So, uh, a chain A can keep going. I mean, here I can commit to A1, but here there is a commit of A2. So I can commit to A3, commit to A4. I mean, they can commit to different, to different states. Different. I mean, you can generate blocks. Okay? This commit is a block. I mean, you can, it can be a single block or it can be every 10 blocks. Okay? So you can be sparse things, but you just, you are, you are in, so you are chain A moves goes on, uh, chain B goes on, maybe chain A generates one block every three seconds and chain B maybe generates a block every ten minutes. That's fine. Okay, and they don't need to wipe one each other. But at some point I want to include the state of chain A in chain B. So I can, for example, withdraw the font. This this state can be uh, the full state, so if you want the state, can be the local execute that I mentioned before, local execute of A. Yeah? So I want to include, not as a global, but individually, I want to include this chain, this chain, this chain in my state. Okay? Yeah? What happens without the capital looking like A in the world actually does it? A what? A, a actually doesn't change the state. We have the capital. No, a, a, exactly. Here, the, the idea of the full point here is that A cannot. So once committed to the state, to a state, they cannot reorder. They cannot change the state. They can move forward, but they cannot go backwards. Okay, that's the. That's why we need. That's why you need. I mean, and then you can. I mean, this is. Imagine that this is a blockchain. It's a consensus. Actually, it's, for this, you don't really require a blockchain. You, you have less things. But uh, the easy way to understand it is that it's a blockchain. Okay? You can scale much better. But that's another, that's another topic. Okay? Uh, so, uh, uh, well, with this, you are, uh, I mean, you are moving forward. This, this can be. I mean, these this, this transfers, uh, I mean, these this states can go really, really fast. I mean, if this blockchain, I mean, at the end is the finality of this, uh, whatever this blockchain uh, uh, half will do this commit method. That's final. Okay. And uh, uh, mm. the idea here is that at some point, just to continue, at some point, you will do kind of a snapshot. I mean, snapshot is you will set up a kind of a snapshot at a point, and then you will get all the proofs that are until the snapshots and aggregate all these proofs in a single proof that are the ones that you're going to send to the uh, to the layer one. Okay, with all with the global exit route that you already uh, uh, built uh, on that. Okay, and of course this proof is going to be validated in layer one uh, to. Okay. But with this uh, thinking in a cross-chain uh, message passing, okay. uh, uh, cross-chain message passing uh, of a few seconds is depending, of course, on the consensus algorithm here. But uh, two, three, four seconds uh, message passing between chains is is 
perfectly, perfectly, perfectly possible. Okay. Um, that's that's the last topic. Uh, um, here, the I mean the, the this commitments of A and B. Okay. So here are two transactions. Okay. But the idea here is that they can have a, a transaction that can be a commitment. Imagine that here I can do a commitment of uh, C1 that depends on A1 and on D1 that depends on D1. Okay? So I can have like a, a multi commitment transactions and of course maybe the two signatures on both sides. This is the idea of a shared sequencer. So the idea is that if you want to do, uh, so you can sign, uh, you can sign, so you can sign different commitments and the idea is that you here you can do uh, atomic transactions with each chain. So you need this happens on one side, this happens on the other side. Okay. So this is to be a kind of a shared sequencer. So shared this so this this method allows shared shared sequencer for synchronous uh, for, for atomic let's say for atomic for atomic transactions. I mean it's a low priority thing, but it, it's the model allows you to, to to do also this 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 kind of uh, uh, atomic uh, transactions. Question. Uh, so you just say like this kind of message path passing to be achieved with like few seconds. Uh, so you just say like uh, this this kind of thing can be used to uh, achieve a uh, message passing in between the chains, and uh, then you say it's going to be to take only a couple of seconds, right? And so my question is, uh, if I understand correctly, the proof. I mean, because the proof is going to be complicated. Right? The proof, the proof is yeah. in a few minutes, right? Then, well, the first, the, I mean, with this model, with this model, the the generation of the, so the time, so the fact that you are splitting the commitment with the proof uh, generation, so you don't depend on the proving time. I mean, if you are following chain A, uh, then you can go as fast as following chain A. If you are not following chain A, then you have to wait for the proof, and then the proof, the proving time becomes relevant for the for the time between uh, chains. Uh, but this uh, this allows you to scale. I mean, if you have 1,000 networks, maybe you are going to follow the five top, so you will have a five interaction, the five top networks, and the other you just wait for the proof. So the whole idea is I don't need to wait for the proof coming out in minutes, but I. Uh, as as, as far as I am able to build the proof, I have a, as far as I have all the so I have as I far so I have a, I'm following the chain. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and, and I'm sure that I have the capability to build a proof. Exactly. I don't do it. I don't. Somebody else will do it. I mean, I will do it only if nobody else is doing, and and I need to uh, commit uh, to to that part. Yeah. So here I mean the, the idea of these uh, uh, atomic transactions also, and this can be a chain. Of course, this also, I mean, if this is a blockchain, this also allows you for, uh, uh, for example, for, for paying the provers. I mean, this is allows to coordinate the generation of the provers, and here you can have decentralized proving that are, I mean, whoever generates this proof, I don't even care. And this can be incentivated here for generating these proofs. So here we can create this market for this proof market of provers, and just they connect to a chain and they generate the proof of different different chains. Of course, we can use here the economics incentives that can run on top of this uh, of this uh, Well, that's very much what I wanted to explain. This is the the, the aggregation layer V3 that we are working running on right now. In your example, the 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 main chain that is running is more like L2 chain, right? Mm -hmm. and so the main chain that you are running is L2 chain, and the chains A, B, and C are L3 chain that are on top of L2, and and they are actually running the same protocol, say they, so they will have the ability to uh, be able to uh, have the capability to prove the transactions from the other chain. Uh, well, this is, I mean, the, the proof, uh, the, the, I mean, here we are talking, we are working very much with recursion. I mean, the, the proof, the full proof is a, it's a proof that proves 
A and B. Uh, so you can have a, here you can, with these two proof, you can accentuate a proof that actually they have PA and PB. So it gives a proof of, of, of a snapshot. So you can aggregate, they, they said you can, you can aggregate proofs. So a proof, an aggregated proof is a proof that proves another proof. That's the, the full topic here. And, and you can recursively create as many as, 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 as you want. Yeah, actually, for example, we are extensively using currently uh, this uh, aggregation with uh, uh, ZKVM. There is a single proof that's proving many batches. So every half an hour, it takes all the batches that happens in half an hour. It aggregates all of them. And, uh, and it generates a proof of all of that. But, but the prerequisite of chain A, B, and C is that they will need to fo follow this uh, recursion stuff, right? For example, they cannot be like polygon and optimism because right? they don't uh, they don't they don't understand each other. Yeah, I mean here that the, the you need to prove this. Uh, in the proof, you need to include all these dependencies. And yeah, this is where I mean, a little bit the complexity comes. I mean, it's not that hard. Because again, proving a dependency means that, well, you need to reveal the full tree of the, of the, the differences. So okay, here, the main primitive is that you want a, a tree is including another tree. There is one, I mean, here is one of, I can, if you want, I can go deep to a one structure that we are using a lot for this kind of proving dependencies. That's, uh, I mean, we are seeing that it's very, very, very useful. Okay. So, in a normal blockchain, but this is, I mean, this is a little bit out of topic, yeah, but in a normal blockchain, so the full point of a blockchain, and that's why it's called blockchain, the same word is that in the hash of the block, we do the hash of the previous one. So, have a block one, block two. And here, the hash of the, the, the block hash of B is so of B two is, is include the hash of B one in the hash of the blockchain. Okay, but imagine that so here the, the, the structure that we are doing is <coughs> imagine that here you have uh, instead of including the hash of the previous chain, you are including a tree of all the history of the blockchain. So. Uh, you have, I mentioned that you have the history of the blockchain, so it's a tree where, I mean, it's a binary tree where an append only tree where you are adding the, the, the hashes, okay, and here you have a tree of the, of the full history of the previous chains, and here you have uh, the, current, uh, the current block. Okay? So when you are creating a new block, mainly what you do is at the beginning of the block, you are, and, and, and all this is in the, all this can be in the same state. Okay, so in order to compute the next state, the first thing you do is add this hash to this tree, compute a block, generate the hash of the block, and then here you just create that, and this is the, block, the next one. Okay, so this allows you to uh, check, uh, so you can you can uh, you can check that. Easily that uh, uh, an old block is included in, so that a new block includes the old block without having to linearly rebuild the full blockchain. I mean, you do this instead of doing it in, in end, you do it in block end because you have this this, this structure. Okay. And we are we are extensively using that uh, in the this structure. We are still extensively using it. I mean, it's a little bit more complex to maintain, but it gives us a lot of flexibility for uh, for um, uh, for proving uh, uh, for proving the uh, for this for this aggregated proof. You know, here, the, the full point is uh, you have a block. So when you have a batch, uh, you are it is you are assuming that there is, uh, there is one, uh, one state that's valid, okay? So here is, you have a state, uh, here is assuming that's a state, uh, one is valid, okay? You have another block, but here you are assuming that the state two is valid. 
So what you do is at the beginning of the walk, you, you just check that the one that you assume in the previous walk is uh, included in the one in the one that you are assuming in the next one. So at the end, you just need to, so in the smart contract, you just need to check that the SM, that the last state of the aggregation of the proof is, is, is valid. Okay, and the, to check is inclusion, I mean, maybe from the state one or state two, maybe there are many states, and this is state one of the other chain, maybe there are many, many states over there. So you can check, yeah, you, you can check easily that this was included in the other one of the structure like this. Okay, but there is a recursion thing, I mean, is uh, instead of, so instead of for each block <coughs> checking that something is included in the last one, so what I'm, I'm, I mean, the last one, maybe something in the future, I don't even know when the proof is going to be generated, uh, something that will happen in the future. So in, a, in, my, in the block is, what's the current state right now? That's one. Okay, I'm assuming that this one is valid, and then, and, and then I just check the block, assuming that this one is valid. In the next block, S, S1, maybe it's S2 or S3, so they are ready, the block advance. Okay, but in the previous one, I already generated the proof for, for S1. So in the next proof, what I'm doing, okay, I'm assuming, so here I'm assuming S2. I'm checking that what I assumed in the previous block was valid. So at the beginning of the proof, I'm checking that S1 is included in S2. And, and I could move, and, and I move forward. Okay. This allow me to, allows me to generate proofs as we go before committing. And when I have a chain of proof, that at the end is okay, I have all these proofs that are valid as far as SN is valid, as, as, as far as this global exclusion is valid. And this is actually what I just check, maybe in the smart contract. I don't even do it in the proof. But with a single check in the smart contract, I, I can validate all the proof because I did it recursively inside the inside the proof. And this, and this is easily done when you have a structure like that. You keep the history and then you just go on the path uh, that you are checking. Okay. okay, so you have, you can possibly have many layers of recursion for aggregating proofs, right? Yeah. And it seems like this, um, I guess my, my like, simple question would be, like, is this, is the number of layers fixed? Or is it going to be it's dynamic? Viable. Yeah, based off of the... It's viable. Yeah. I can I don't know how much we are in time. If you were interested, I can explain. I'm very, I don't know. I'm very interested, but... <laughs> yeah. I don't know how much time Before we on that, yeah. So I need to just log my laptop. Before that, so. Let me see how we do it. Infinite recursion. Yes. Is that right? Infinite recursion is a practical way. Let's see if I'm... Can I connect this? Uh, 